All right, I think we'll get going. Um, if there's any latecomers, then hopefully they'll be able to catch up with what's going on. Um, so for anyone who isn't aware, Paragon is the brand new plugin from Nijan Audio. Uh, it was released yesterday. Um, so it's brand new. Um, this is kind of the, the first look for a lot of people, although there is some content on our YouTube channel already. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start a screen share and show you a little bit about the plugin. Um, you won't be able to hear anything on the demo today. I've opted not to do audio for this webinar just because Zoom is in mono anyway. So you won't really be able to get a good idea of how things sound. So what I would recommend is going to the Nugent Audio website. Um, and downloading a free trial from there. The free trial lasts for 15 days. Uh, it's fully featured, so there's no limitations. The only limitation is the time limit. And then if you have any questions, you can always email support at nugenaudio.com and we will do whatever we can to help. So you should now be able to see my Pro Tools window. This is Paragon, this is the main UI. For anyone not aware, Paragon is a convolution reverb. Um, it supports up to 712 channels of audio. So that means it's perfect for a lot of surround applications, perfect for Dolby Atmos beds, uh, and so on. It isn't an up mixer, but it can be used to create surround reverbs from lower channel counts. So that means, for example, that you could have a piece of stereo audio and you could send that to a 712 instance of Paragon and it would still create reverb in all 10 of those channels, even though the actual source audio um, is only two channels. Um, so for anyone who isn't aware, there are, I guess, two main types of reverb when you're talking about reverb plugins. There are convolution reverbs and there are algorithmic reverbs. Paragon is a convolution reverb. Um, so that means that it's it uses real recordings of real life spaces. So um, when I'm talking about real recordings, I'll be referring to them as impulse responses. That's what we call those. So convolution reverbs use impulse responses. Um, and that means that they sound much more realistic. I'm sorry if this is going way too basic for some people, but just, just to bring everyone up to speed, convolution reverbs sound more realistic, but generally speaking, you don't have as much control over the sound of a convolution reverb because effectively it sounds how it sounds. It sounds however the room that it was recorded in sounds. An algorithmic reverb is much more flexible um, so uh, most, probably most reverb plugins that you find will be algorithmic reverbs. Those aren't based on real spaces, but you do have much more control over the room size, the uh, decay time and other um, elements of the sound. Paragon um, uses state-of-the-art resynthesis to allow the same level of control as an algorithmic reverb. So it is a convolution reverb. It has that same realistic sound. It uses real recordings of real spaces. However, you'll see from the UI here that you still have that same level of control over the decay time, the room size, the pre-delay, the brightness, and so on. So the idea is that this is a reverb that has the selling points of both. It sounds like a convolution reverb. In fact, it is a convolution reverb, but it also offers you that level of flexibility, that level of tweakability in order to be really creative with your mix. And it also means that you don't need to keep anywhere near as large a library of impulse responses. Um, because you're able to control Paragon's impulse responses in such a flexible way, um, it means that, you know, say with another convolution reverb, you might have five or six different impulse responses for different sized churches. Just for example, you might have a small church, a large church, medium sized church, one that's very bright, one that's very dark sounding. With Paragon, you don't need to have such a large library because you can create all those sounds. So you maybe will have one um, 
church in Bulls Response, which you can then um, control in a lot of different ways to create all kinds of different types of reverb. Okay, so like I said, it uses um, state-of-the-art resynthesis. That's something that was developed alongside the University of York. And um, so Dr. Jez Wells from the University of York, he came to us with this technology for convolution reverb. It's brand new technology and it currently isn't available in any other reverb. So at the moment, Paragon is the only reverb plugin which allows that same level of control. Because of the unique convolution method that Paragon uses, it does mean that you aren't able to import your own impulse responses. You do need to use our impulse responses because there's an extra process that needs to happen. It's quite a time consuming process. Um, so effectively, we, we have provided uh, our own pretty decent library of impulse responses, which you can use um, in order to create pretty much any reverb sound. In order to do that, to create um, the IRs for that unique convolution method, we commissioned recordings of a bespoke library of B format ambisonic impulse responses. So previously there wasn't an appropriately high quality library of 3D recordings of impulse responses. So we commissioned our own library that's been recorded specifically for this plugin. And again, that's something that is unique to this reverb. But without further ado, I will now get on to um, giving you a bit of a tour of the UI and all the features within Paragon itself. So the first thing, and a lot of users, I imagine, will probably just stick to this element of the plugin. It has a pretty extensive collection of presets. So you've got, um, you know, different churches, you know, large church, medium church, whatever else. Um, hotel corridor, you have car interior, you've got a stairwell, a lot of presets that you'd kind of um, expect to find in a reverb, I guess. I'll set it going now, just so you can see what's going on on the UI, even though unfortunately you won't be able to hear it. Um, so the main panel controls, I'm going to go clockwise, starting from here on the left. You have the pre-delay and the, the decay time. The decay, I believe, goes up to five times, yep, five times the uh, whatever the default is. It goes up to five times the size of the original decay time. And you've also got pre-delay here on the left. You have a global high-pass filter and low-pass filter. So that's high-pass and low-pass for all the channels. Um, and you also have a global crosstalk control. So that controls the percentage of the dry signal which is bleeding across into the other channels. So for example, I was talking before about using a 712 reverb on a stereo source. Um, if you're doing anything like that, then you'll need to have the crosstalk set relatively high. If you have the crosstalk on zero, then obviously there's not going to be any audio um, going into the other channels because there's no crosstalk. You have some more in-depth controls for the crosstalk here, just below that. So you have whether or not the crosstalk is going into the center channel and also the out. The same for the LTS and RTS channels in and out, and also the LFE. So for most of the presets by default, there's no crosstalk going into the center channel. And that's to help with dialogue clarity. And there's no crosstalk going in or out of the LFE because Generally speaking, you don't want much reverb going on in the LFE channel. However, if you do want to change those, then it is possible to enable the crosstalk going into the center channel and it going in and out of the LFE channel, if you so desire. Um, just below that, you've also got control of the room size and the brightness. Again, the room size goes up to five times the original impulse response and for anyone who's not aware, I'm sure we all know the term brightness, but just in case you don't, um, that allows you to control the kind of level of, I guess, additional high frequencies and excitement um, in the kind of upper end of the frequency spectrum. So the UI visuals display 
the kind of intensity of the reverb around the surround field. So the way to visualize this is kind of a top down view uh, as if you're looking down from the ceiling, you've got the LCR at the front here and you've got all your surround channels around there. And this is a visualization of kind of how intense the, uh, the audio is in, in various places around the, the surround field. If you're familiar with some of our some of our other products, such as Halo Up Mix or Halo Down Mix, then you'll you'll recognise that there is a similar haze view in in those plugins. Although this isn't showing you the exact same information because it is obviously showing just the reverb intensity rather than the uh, the overall surround intensity. You're also able to solo individual channels if you want to hear what's going on with the reverb in your individual surround channels. Um, so that's pretty much everything going on in the main panel. Um, next, we have the IR panel. This is where you are able to control the impulse responses within Paragon. So in the top left here, there's a button that says load modeled IR. That gives us access to the IR library um, and we can load in any of the impulse responses from that bespoke um, commissioned impulse response library that we created for Paragon. And then you have a view, a, a spectrogram view of the impulse response here at the top. You can also, if you don't have any audio in the project yet, or if you kind of, you just want a quick reference point, you do have the sample pieces of audio on the right hand side here that allow you to hear how whatever impulse response you've selected will affect just a few pieces of dry audio. So they're fairly basic samples. We've got a, a bass drum, guitar, we've got singing and so on. So that's your spectrogram view of the impulse response itself. Below that is our frequency interactor. So this allows you to effectively EQ the impulse response itself. So you can add up to four EQ nodes um, and you're able to control either the amplitude or the frequency specific decay time of um, different frequencies within the IR. So that means even beyond controlling the room size, the decay time, the pre-delay and so on of those um, bespoke IRs, you can control the impulse responses further by EQing both the amplitude and the frequency specific decay time. Um, as with any EQ, you have control over the Q um, and you also have control over the curve type. So you, at the moment we have bell curves, high shelf and low shelf. We are also adding in, um, in hopefully a, a pretty um, imminent update, we will be adding in a high pass and a low pass there as well. Um, and again, you can either control all that globally or you can um, kind of bypass specific channels or add EQ only to specific channels in the surround field. The model complexity um, is another control that you have on the right hand side here that essentially gives you a more detailed or less detailed picture of the original impulse response itself. So if you are wanting a really, really detailed um, surround reverb, perhaps for a particularly sparse mix, then you'd have the complexity really high up. Or if this is something that's gonna be buried quite low in the mix and you want Paragon to maybe go a little bit easier on, a, on the processing power of your machine, then you can turn the complexity down and you won't have the same level of detail, but it's still gonna be true convolution reverb um, based on those real 3D recordings of, of impulse responses. So that's the IR panel. The third panel is the IO panel here. So this is a little bit more detailed than some of the IO settings in some of our other plugins. Again, if you're familiar with Halo Up Mix or Halo Down Mix, then you will probably already be familiar with some of these controls because Halo Up Mix and Halo Down Mix both have similar IO controls. But for anyone who isn't familiar, I'll um, go through this from left to right. So first of all, you have an input trim for each of the channels. 
you also have an output trim, pretty straightforward, um, as well as the global high pass filter and low pass filter on the main panel, you have individual high pass and low pass for each of the channels as well. Um, and individual pre-delay, individual decay time, individual crosstalk controls for both the in and the out, as well as um, a wet dry control for each of the channels. So again, I mentioned earlier about dialogue clarity. A lot of that, if you're doing anything that's mixing for film and TV, a lot of your dialogue clarity is going to rely on the center channel. So it's especially useful having those controls for the center channel, you know, able, being able to bypass that altogether, being able to control the crosstalk levels um, and so on. You'll notice in the bottom right as well, you've got when you're on the IO view, you have the main Paragon view in the bottom right here. So the idea is that you can still see exactly what's going on, um, hopefully at all times. The final feature that I want to mention as well is if you go into the kind of back end settings, which you access by clicking the Nugent Audio logo in the bottom left, you go to credits and options, you are able to switch on the automate all parameters feature. That allows you to, as it says on the tin, automate all parameters within the plugin. Um, that does require a reload of the plugin host. And we only recommend using that feature if it's something that is really integral to whatever you're doing. But that can be really useful, for example, if you're working on a TV show where you're requiring the use of lots of different reverb spaces throughout. The workflow we would recommend for that is to have two instances of Paragon within your project. Um, because of the complex processing involved in the resynthesis within Paragon, it isn't currently possible to instantaneously switch between two different settings. Because we don't use static IRs within Paragon, because it, it, it effectively, any time you change the settings, it generates a whole new impulse response. That means that there is a delay of a few seconds before whatever new sound you've created is coming through the plugin. We'd recommend you have two instances of Paragon and then kind of one of those can be changing over in the background while whatever reverb is, is going through the, um, the currently active instance of Paragon. So that's the way that a lot of our beta testers have been doing it. Um, most of our beta testers are audio engineers who work on TV and film and they've found Paragon pretty useful if you just have two instances of it in a project, one that's active, one that's doing the resynthesis at any given time, and then you just alternate between those scene by scene. That's basically all the features of Paragon that I've shown. Um, so yeah, if that's everything covered and no one has any burning questions, then I will take my leave. Um, thanks very much, everyone who's attended. Um, I hope you do go and download a trial of Paragon and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your AES online event as well. Thanks very much.